Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. Today I got a job that's a re-engineering job. Sadly, I'd say you won't be able to see most of this because of it being up in this hole. But uh, basically what I've got here is a busted gearbox. The customer has several of these. Obviously it's a weak engineer design that uh, interior bearing support is not sufficiently supported so any kind of side load on the shaft and it busts it out and junks the gearbox so i'm going to see if it can't come up with a better solution than what they have but first thing i do is get what they have out of there before i can start making what i want one thing that makes this tricky is there's another gear that runs right in here that has to mesh with that gear. So the piece I've got to put in there is gonna to have to have a notch cut out of it, which is what makes this setup particularly weak because uh, there's no support on this one side and there can't be because it interferes with this other gear. So I'm gonna fire up the mill and go in here with uh, a milling cutter and see so if I can't get that cut out down to a flat bottom so I got something clean and fresh to work with. And then I'm gonna make a steel piece, a slug to go down in there. It'll stand up, it'll have the bearing bore, and I'll have to mill a relief out of the side of it to clear the gear. So I'm gonna get the mill fired up and I'll mill this out. We'll take a look at it when we're done. Cause like I said, you can't see what I'm doing here. So once I get that knocked out, I'll bring you back. Just a few chips. Let me get that cleaned out where I can get a little better look at what we're doing. Better look at that pile. Wheeling it down. Well, I've got all the old stands milled out of there and I've got a flat surface machine now that I can work with, so I need to make a slug to bolt up in there. Means I also need to drill and tap some more holes. Well, I could probably just put studs through the existing holes, run them all the way through, and uh, I can put nuts on both sides. Well, so maybe I'll do that instead of using bolts in. I have to check and see what kind of clearance it's got that there's no issues with doing that but made a lot of chips in the process so see what we can get worked up here next all right so I've taken my coax and swept this bore and got centered up on it so now I'm gonna come in here and drill a full four bolt pattern to bolt my block inside with. So I'll come over here with some random amount that I think looks good and uh, punch that through there. 
So I got my drill bit in here and should be ready to go. So fire the mill up and get this done. Okay, so got my four bolt pattern done here. Uh, particular importance is this one here that's on the side where most all the thrust is. So I did go up uh, from this size where it's just holding the bearing because it's gonna be holding the plate with a decent amount of torque on it. So I put seven sixteenths holes in there. Now I go find a piece of five inch by roughly three inch tall block to make the piece to bolt inside here. So. I'll go do that and I guess it's off to the lathe. Well, there it is, got it centered up.
And there it is. So that's a grinder mark. Where I had this out once and test fitted it, and I didn't have enough clearance. So I've come back and milled a little more clearance in here. And I'll go test fit it again and see how it comes out. So, show you what I got here, clearance wise. Let's say it's cleared. Some of those V cut notches I put in there work just good. Then, uh, so I don't have to open that hole any larger than necessary and make it any weaker since that's the weak point on this side where it's thin over there. It gives us some more meat to hold so it doesn't blow the side out of it. In order to be able to get the race out, I'm using a washer that'll catch the race and it's smaller than the hole. So that way it gives you a ledge to tap on to knock the race out. So. And then uh, the end of the cage needs relief because it sticks through the back of this a little bit. So, so in order for it not to hit, I've got this washer here that uh, matches the race. That way it's got clearance for the cage. And I've bored it out the extra deep to allow that. So I'm going to knock this in there and I'll bring you back. So hopefully you can see there the clearance where I've got that tab going out into the gear to give extra support around the bearing. See it's not real thick over here. And you can see the uh, flat washer under the race in there. So you got something to hammer on to knock the race out in the future and do any repair work. Um, but other than that, it's all together. You got just a here that tick. It's just very little bit of backlash. About like it should be. So once this thing's got oil running all in it, got to have clearance for the oil to keep everything cool. So I'm a little concerned about is about whether or not there'll be enough oil flow through there to keep that bottom shaft cool. I mean, it runs submerged in this. It's always under oil all the time, so I don't really think it'll be that big of a deal. And the uh, way I cut that V-notch in there, it should kind of act like a pump, I think, where the oil will get in the blades, or the get in the gear teeth, and it'll kind of act like propeller blades and drag the oil through there and pump it around and spit it back out. So I think it'll be just fine. I got this overly complicated and underbuilt gearbox put back together, at least in my opinion, uh, for what it's doing. Uh, for what it's doing, it looks a little light duty, particularly in the bottom where the power outputs. And this thing's like overdriving up. 
that shaft a whole lot, which in general is not the best thing to do when you already are turning a thousand RPMs, jacking the speeds way up and burying it in the bottom of the gearbox is a recipe for making it run hot and then putting a little teeny tiny bearing on it down there to take all the thrust and everything. And it could have been a lot better. This could be a, they could have made this gearbox about twice the size probably for the application and it would have survived a whole lot better than what they do. I know it's a lot of wear on the splines and stuff here as well. Uh, I don't think there's a, really a lot of hours on these from what I understand. They're only got about 2,000 hours on them and they look like this, which is not real good, but hey, it's New Holland, we expect. So that shows all the, what all I had to clearance in order to be able to clear all the stuff in this box. So. That uh, complicated things quite a bit too, having all these extra gear sets in here. So we've got three shafts running out of this box and four gears. Well, I hope you all enjoyed getting to see this little project. Well, it wasn't really a little project, it was fairly involved. Uh, getting all the clearances figured out in here to reconstruct this in a different method. So I'm Not sure I'd do this again, but that's what they wanted done. So that's what they're getting and Hopefully this works out better for them than that little cast here That's obviously prone to breaking by the number of scattered gearboxes laying here of the same type so Just have to see how this does and Maybe it's a good fix, maybe it wasn't, but it looks like it'll be good, so I hope for the best. Because this pandemic, Bailey's uh, social distancing and working from home, so he's on his bed up the house. Well, I'm down here slaving away in the dark, finishing up this gearbox, so thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, I'll catch y'all later.